With polynomial division, we've seen one way to change what a fractional function looks like and to, as a result to be able to integrate it. What we're going to look at in the next couple of videos is how to break down fractions in another way that makes them easy to integrate as well. And this particular method is called partial fraction decomposition. And we're going to look at three different types of, of decomposition. They're all really the same thing, but they're used when you have different kinds of fractions. And the first one we're going to look at is where we have distinct linear factors. So what we saw with polynomial division was how to actually divide two, fraction, uh, two functions and to rewrite something as a polynomial and a proper rational function. Another way to rewrite a rational function is to decompose it into smaller and simpler fractions and then sum them together. When we can factorize the denominator, then we can use those factors as the denominators of a new set of fractions that sum to the original one. It's basically undoing the process of combining fractions over a common denominator. And we call this thing partial fraction decomposition. And depending on the form of the factors, the process that we need to follow slightly changes. So we're going to look at that process change over three different videos. This is just a bit of a schematic of the idea. What you're probably used to is composing fractions, composing fractions from multiple fractions, in other words moving in this direction, where you start off with a fraction plus another fraction, try to get a common denominator for the two, and then combine them over a single denominator. What we're going to be looking at now is decomposing fractions, so moving back up this way, where we start with a fraction over a single denominator, with two factors, for example f and g, pulling them apart in some way, and then decomposing so that we have multiple different denominators. And this is partial fraction decomposition. So what we'll find is that once we factorize the denominator, sometimes we'll just get a set of distinct linear factors. So here I'm talking about something like maybe if we had uh, 3x squared all over x times x minus 1. The factors x and x minus 1 are linear and they're distinct because they're different factors. So we call this a distinct linear case, distinct linear factor case. So the process goes that we factorize the denominator, something like this, and then we form new fractions, each with a denominator made from one of those factors. So we'd have something over x and something over x minus 1. And we're going to try to add them together. And when we have these linear distinct denominators, we have a constant on the top a constant that we don't know what is yet, a and b let's call it, and our plan is to figure out what those are. Once you've written the fractions like that, the idea is to equate the two, so to say our original fraction is equal to our decomposed fractions, and then we need to recombine the right hand side over a single common denominator, strangely enough the same one as we have here, and then try to figure out what a and b are to make the equation true as equating the coefficients of powers of the variable to determine those constants. So let's check it out with this example. Decompose 1 over x squared minus 4 into its partial fraction form. So the first step is to factorize the denominator. On the denominator we've got x squared minus 4. So that's a difference of two squares, which we can write as x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we've factorized it into a linear factor, x plus 2, and another linear factor, x minus 2. Going back up to our steps, the second step was form new fractions, each with one of those denominators and an undetermined constant for the numerator. So what we're going to say then is that 1 over x squared minus 4 needs to be equal to a, a number we don't know yet, over x plus 2, added to b over x minus 2, the other linear factor. So we want these things to be equal, and we need to figure out a and b to make that true. And the next step is on the right hand side, we're going to combine these back together again over a single denominator. And of course it's going to be x plus 2, x minus 2, which is exactly the same as x squared minus 4 anyway. And then we've got a, we need to multiply that by x minus 2 and b we need to multiply by x plus 2 so that we can have the common denominator. And that's all going to be equal to 1 over x squared minus 4. Now we know that x plus 2, x minus 2 multiplied out gives us x squared minus 4, 
So we can actually multiply those out from both sides. They cancel each other out. And we're left with 1 is equal to ax minus 2 plus bx plus 2. So that's going to be the equation we work with on the next page. So there we've got it. 1 is a times x minus 2 plus b times x plus 2. Now what we can do is expand that right hand side out. So we've got ax minus 2a plus bx plus 2b. Now notice that what we've got there is a constant 1 on the left. There's some constants here on the right as well. And then we've got some x terms. There's no x terms on the left but there are some on the right. So what we're going to do is equate the coefficients of powers of x. On the left we've got 1 is equal to minus 2a plus 2b and 0x's is equal to ax's plus bx's. So we've got two equations for two unknowns, a and b. Let's just take this second one. Let's call them equation 1 and equation 2. Equation 2 implies that a is minus b just by rearranging that equation. Now if we substitute that into 1, we can say that 1 is equal to minus 2 lots of a, which is minus 2 lots of minus b, which is 2b, plus 2b. In other words, 4b is equal to 1, so b is equal to a quarter. And if b is a quarter, then a must be minus a quarter. So therefore, our original fraction 1 over x squared minus 4 can be rewritten as 1 on 4 times 1 on x plus 2 minus 1 on 4 times 1 on x plus 2 and then plus b which is 1 on 4 times 1 on x minus 2. So we've decomposed our original fraction into a fraction with linear denominators. Now you can check that by just multiplying out and adding back together and you should get back the same result but basically the idea is to leave it like that. So now why would we want to do that again? Well it's exactly for this reason. I can't remember off the top of my head what that integral is. I know I could do it but I do now know that I can rewrite the integrand just like this. So I can do the integral by rewriting its integrand using a partial fraction decomposition and then do the integral knowing using rules that I already know. So I can say the integral of 1 on x squared minus 4 dx is equal to the integral of a partial fraction decomposition that we just found. So I'm going to copy that. Paste it here. and then we can integrate these. So that's going to be minus a quarter, a constant multiple. 1 on x plus 2 integrates to give me log of x plus 2, plus 1 on 4 is a constant multiple, and log of x minus 2. And don't forget the plus c. So there we go. Easily done using some rules, provided we know what the partial fraction decomposition is. Otherwise I don't really know where to start with this one. So, there we go, that's our first little look at partial fraction decomposition, where we have distinct linear factors, and then using that to perform an integration. So what next? Uh, first of all, if you're looking at another text, check out a section on integration using partial fractions. Uh, check out any exercises that you can see there. And then for the next video, let's think, what, what might we do if, instead of just having linear factors that are distinct, what about if some of them were repeated? Like, for example, if they were raised to a power. We're going to see what to do there.